Good morning, Dana here. Um, this week I was reading a book called The Liturgy of the Ordinary, Sacred Practices in Everyday Life. And the woman who wrote it outlines in one of her chapters the way in which she loses her keys one morning and goes from composed and put together to um, despair, self-condemnation, uh, blaming others. And how, though this tiny, forgettable 15 minutes was forgettable, it was also the apocalypse. She says, apocalypse literally means an unveiling or uncovering. In my anger, grumbling, self-berating, cursing, doubt, and despair, I glimpsed for a few moments how tightly I cling to control and how little control I actually have. And in the absence of control, feeling stuck and stressed, those parts of me that I prefer to keep hidden were momentarily unveiled. In my conversations with many of you, I think we can relate to this. It's um, not just in the moments where we lose our keys or things go south for us in our day-to-day -day lives, but also in this moment. I've heard from many of you that um, in feeling out of control or that you don't have as much control as you, you used to in your life at this moment, and feeling and extra circumstances where we feel stressed and put under pressure, that parts of us are being revealed that we didn't really want people to know we're there. Like maybe our un it's been harder to tap into kindness and gentleness and patience um, or love even. And when we have these moments in our lives, it can be easy for us to, um, think that we need to eradicate them before Jesus can love us. But this is the thing that Jesus didn't come for really good people. Jesus came for us who stumble and find brokenness in us daily. And it's in those moments that Jesus wants to meet us. And so we say in the Christian tradition that when we notice these things, when these pieces of who we are are unveiled, that those are moments in which God has come to meet us and transform us. And so when we tell the truth about what has happened, which is a form of confession, when we can tell the truth and take responsibility for the ways that we haven't loved others, ourselves, or God in um, the ways that we have been invited into, um, that... God's forgiveness is spoken over us. Um, in those moments um, that reveal our lostness and brokenness, she says, we need to develop the habit of admitting the truth of who I am, not running to justify myself or minimize my sin. And yet in my brokenness and lostness, I also need to form the habit of letting God love me, trusting again in his mercy and receiving again his words of forgiveness and absolution over me. We do this publicly in services because we have so many unkind and condemning thoughts that can tell us, she goes on to say, that God's love is distant, cold, irrelevant, and that I must prove myself to God and other people that I am orphaned and unlovable, that God is tapping his toe impatient with me, ready to walk out on me. These thoughts are loud enough that I need a human voice telling me week in and week out that they are lies. I need to hear from someone who knows me, that there is grace enough for me, that Christ's work is on my behalf, even as I am on my knees confessing that I've blown it again this week. We may confess quietly, but we are reminded of forgiveness out loud. If you have failed this week somehow, as have I, recognize that God's love is for you and that in bringing that into the light, Christ has come to heal you. You are loved. You are forgiven.